God. I praise God. Thank you for joining us virtually again. Once again, another Sunday, we are worshiping together in community. We have a group of leaders here who are here being poured into and praying over you. And, um, we just want to just use this time. God is doing a new thing. God is showing us different ways that we can connect with each other and connect to God. It's not the normal way. God's doing a new thing. So let's lean into it. Y'all ready to lean into it? I'm really excited about the word on today. And I just want y'all to join in with me. We're just going to hop right into it. I'm reading from Luke 13, the gospel of Luke. Luke 13, starting at verse 10. Um, this is a, um, a thing that Luke was following Jesus around, and Jesus was pretty active in this chapter. If you read the whole chapter, Jesus was like, he, Jesus was getting everybody in this chapter. But I love this particular story. This is a story we don't hear much about this lady who we're going to talk about today. I don't know how she gets left out of most of the preaching stories, but I love this little lady, and we're going to talk about her today. We are in a series talking about restoration, about reclaiming, about restoring, reimagining. We're, we're studying God as a healer, so we're going to look at this healing passage when Jesus did a miracle with this woman. So Luke 13, um, starting at uh, verse 10, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Thank you, Sister Tyler. If you're not joining us on our Wednesday nights, what are you doing? We're doing Wednesday's online Bible studies with Pastor Mike. We're growing with Pastor Mike. It's been amazing, and this is where Sister Tyler told me about the Passion Translation, so let's read it. It says, one Sabbath day, while Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he encountered a seriously handicapped woman. Somebody say a handicapped woman. Yes, yes. She was crippled and had been doubled over for 18 years. Her condition was caused by a demonic spirit of bondage that had left her unable to stand up straight. Lord have mercy. While Jesus, when Jesus saw her condition, Jesus saw her condition. He called to her, he called her to him and gently laid his hands on her. Then he said, dear woman, you are free. I release you forever from this crippling spirit. Instantly, she stood straight and tall and overflowed with glorious praise to God. Amen. May God bless God's word as it goes forth. I want to talk to you today about a healed and restored perspective. A healed and restored perspective. Um, you could use a subtitle that says, pick your face up. Pick your face up. Y'all, anybody grew up and you was acting up and you had a long face after you didn't like something your parents said? And they said, you know what? You better pick your face up. Maybe that was me. That's my childhood trauma. Maybe y'all didn't grow up with my people. Um, so a, a healed and restored perspective. I want to talk to you today about this lady. This lady in the Bible who has no name. All we know her is by her infirmity. That's all we know. She don't have no name. They didn't say she was Sarah, Martha, Beth, nothing. Well, all we have is a no-name woman. And you know, I just want to add a side note. You know God does God's best work through no-name people. You ever notice that there's more people in the Bible that God heals that we don't know their names as than we do? And don't let this world and this society trick you into thinking you got to make a name for yourself before God can use you. Amen. God specializes in using a bunch of no names. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Yes, God. Thank you for using the no names. And um, do you know what it feels like to be known by your weakness? It says all we know about her is that she was bent over for, uh, doubled over for 18 years. That's how we knew her. They was like, oh, there go the lady who's crippled. Do you know what it feels like to be only known by your weaknesses? I don't know if you know, but... Black folks is good for this. I don't know if you grew up around black folks, but we might not know your name. We'd be like, yeah, you know Willie? Wh Willie, Willie with the foot. You know, we, we call people by their issue. 
<laughs> like, oh, you know, you know Sally? No, Sally. Sally with the on her little with the thing on her head. Sally. That's how we usually recognize each other. We call each other out by our weaknesses. I don't know if anybody has had that in your past. You've been known by your weakness. But I want to take just a few moments. I want you to think about this lady. Let's imagine what her life was like. It's easy to read this passage and say like, oh, that's good. Jesus healed her and move on. But really, let's think about it. This woman had been bent over double for 18 years. So she was literally like this for 18 years. This is how she walked around. She looked like the, hey, how you doing? How y'all? Yeah, y'all doing good? I'm on my way to the market. Don't worry about me. Can you imagine being in this position for 18 years? This was her life. She had to cook like this. She had to wash like this. She had to go out and, and greet people in the market, take care of her business. This was what she, this was her perspective for 18 years. Come on, think about that. 18 years means that there was once a time when she wasn't like this. So that means slowly, what, we don't know what caused the disease that caused, maybe it was arthritis, maybe it was, you know, they didn't have a Kaiser that you could just run into back then. So she had to deal with this thing for eight, some of y'all ain't even 18 years yet. Some people who looking at this, 18 years is a whole person for her to be bent down looking at someone. She used to be able to look at people in the eye at one time. She used to just be straight up, but slowly her perspective changed. You know, a lot happens when you spend 18 years looking at the ground. You miss a lot. Have you ever, were you one of those kids that just walked and looked down all the time and your parents had to remind you like, you gotta keep your head on the swivel. You can't be just looking down. You gotta, I don't know, know y'all, that's hood life. I don't know nobody else. You had to look, cause if you spent too much time looking down on the ground, you would bump into stuff, you would fall, you would trip, right? So this is what she did, 18 years looking on the ground. Let me see if any of y'all can relate to this lady. She was stuck. She was stuck in a position that life had put her in. She, that was her only perspective. She, she was given a limited perspective. Have you ever felt stuck? Have you ever felt like you were in a position, life put you in a crazy position? I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to live like, like, live like this, but this is how my life is ended up, and now I'm stuck. And now I just have a small perspective. That's all I can see is a limited perspective. I wonder if any of us can relate to this lady. I really love talking about I don't hear enough about her. And it says she was doubled over. And to me, that symbolizes what it looks like when we have so many weights and cares on us. Y'all remember if you ever had a backpack that had lots of, kids don't have backpacks no more, I don't know what happened. But we used to have all our textbooks in one backpack. Now it takes, but they don't do that to kids no more. Do y'all remember that? You had your English book, your math book, your, all in one backpack and you walking home like this, right? To me, her bent over double symbolizes how we go through life bent over with the weights and the cares of the world on our backs. Has anyone ever felt like that? Do you feel like life has just pushed you down? That life is laying, you got the weight of the world, as they say, on your shoulders. Can I get some hand emojis? Am I alone in this? Does anybody else feel the way I feel when the problems, and uh, you know what has been weighing me down lately? Opinions. There's so many opinions. I was thinking about this. I think when we were growing up before, before internet, BI days, before internet, you know, all you really had to talk to was your people, maybe your surrounding, your family, maybe people at your church, people at your school. You really didn't get a lot of perspectives as, you know, just the people you were around. Now you hear everybody's perspective and opinions on literally everything, and it takes a toll. Anybody else feel that? 
Like if I hear one more side of the story, if I hear one more argument, if I hear one more debate on what to or what not to, why, why you shouldn't, it's a lot. We are weighted down by opinions and issues. But I love this woman. You know why I love this woman? Where did it say she was when Jesus found her? Y'all remember? This lady, Jesus came to speak at the synagogue. Where was this lady at? In the synagogue. This little lady with her bent over self made her way to church, made her way to the temple, made her way to where God was 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 going to be showing up and manifest she didn't let nothing stop her she reminds me a lot of y'all who are still watching virtually for y'all who are here in the building with us today no matter what life threw at her she still made her way into the house of god she made her way into the virtual house of god i love this lady i don't know why more people don't talk about this little lady she made her way into church and i'm sure they didn't have a little nice handicap section for her she was trying 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 to find her way you know trying to sit in a seat somewhere it must have been really uncomfortable to sit in that situation most of us would have just stayed home be like you know what I, i'm not gonna even bother they ain't gonna have no seating for me i can't see all the men i'm just gonna stay this lady pressed her way to church to the synagogue and then, you know the thing that i like about her is that she was sitting in church, minding her own business. And just think, when you're sitting in church, you can kind of see people's eyes. I can see everybody's eyes here, eye level. She couldn't, she didn't have eye contact. There was no way she had the same eye line as everybody else. She was, her head was down, she's bent over down. But it says something really interesting in the passage. It says Jesus saw her. Jesus saw her, y'all. The one who was bent over, probably hidden from sight, probably lots of men, people who are tall, probably sitting everywhere. How did Jesus see her? She was probably so surprised when Jesus called her name. Like, wait, who? Me? Who are you talking to? He couldn't talk to me because I'm, how could he see me? The funny thing about it is that Jesus saw her when she couldn't see Jesus. Think about that in your own life. Jesus saw her when she couldn't even see him. She couldn't even lift her head to see who's the guest preacher today. I wonder who's coming in today. Jesus saw her, and it says Jesus touched her, and she was healed. Hey, don't underestimate the touch of Jesus. Just imagine this lady had been overlooked for 18 years. No, you know, if you had any type of infirmity, it automatically equated sin in that culture. You did something, you, your parents did something, some may ride with you, we ain't fooling with you. This was the first time someone saw her and touched her. Don't underestimate the touch of Jesus. How many need the touch of Jesus in your life? How many want Jesus to touch you? How many, how many people need Jesus to see you? Right now, God, see me. God, I, need, I know you can see me, and I need a touch from you. We, come on, let's just stop right now. God, I need a touch from you. We will not underestimate your touch because something amazing happened when he touched her. It says that she stood up immediately. Now, this is a miracle. It didn't take a chiropractor. It didn't take back surgery. It didn't take arthritis medicine, whatever. Immediately, 18 years, she was stuck in one position, and she immediately stood up. This is an amazing miracle physically, but what I want to talk to you today about is what happened, not just physically, but something else, a miracle happened with this lady. God healed and restored her perspective. I want you to think about that. She went from looking down, chronically looking down. That's all she could do was look at the ground. All she could do is look at the things of this earth, the ground, the dirt. We call it earth. The things of this earth, that's all she can see. And when Jesus touched her, he changed her perspective. 
She could no longer just, this wasn't her only option anymore. Are y'all following me? She now has another choice of viewing pleasure. Amen. Like this woman, God is changing our perspective from just looking at earthly things. For far too long, we are just looking at earthly things. Our position has been looking at the ground, looking at earthly things. I believe that God wants to heal and restore our perspective. Come on, can you say heal and restore our perspective? Come on, one more time. God wants to heal and restore our perspective. Remember our little lady, at uh, uh, one time she could see correctly. And over time, gradually, over 18 years, it slowly went away. What in your life makes you go from looking up and being optimistic to perpetually looking down, being skeptical, and seeing the downside of everything? Come on, think about it. It gradually happened. She didn't just, you know, go over in one day. She couldn't get, no, gradually she couldn't see anymore. Gradually, she became pessimistic. Gradually, all she could see were the things that, and you know what caused this pain? It was pain. Whatever that was made her go further and further to make herself comfortable. I can't stand up straight. It was pain. What pain in your life, my brother and sister, is causing you to look at the downside of everything? Pain avoidance will make you, <laughs> pain avoidance is real. We don't love the y'all, people who do extreme things not to feel pain. Not just physically, but emotionally, spiritually. We don't want to trust God anymore. The last time I did it, I didn't end well, so I don't want to go through that pain no more. I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to go through what I went through last time. Pain will cause us to be avoidant. This was our lady. This is what she went through. But. God is healing and restoring our perspectives. Just think of the season that we're in. God's healing and restoring our perspective on health, right? This is a great time for us to think about what we eat. <laughs> think about what we put in, in our bodies, beefing up our vitamins and our supplements. You know, before the pandemic, we wasn't right. We wasn't right. Y'all go, we go to get some chips at the store eat them, pump gas, go back to eating our chips. We wasn't doing right. We didn't, nobody was doing, taking care and sanitation, nothing. So this is a great time for us to focus in on our health. I also believe that God is healing and restoring our perspective about death, right? Can I keep it 100% real? God is dealing, this is a season, death is always around us. But in this season, we are hyper aware of death. Death is all around us. We're seeing people die at high rates. We know loved ones who have died. It's, it's, death seems like it's overwhelming. But God is, is, is challenging us today and healing our perspective. How, do you, how are you dealing with death? Have you thought about, have you thought about it? Have you thought about your own soul salvation? Have you thought about when the Lord comes to take you home one day? Will you be ready? Is your soul in order? Do you know what it takes to be saved? Do you have your will in place? Do you have things left for your family? This is, God is revealing and restoring things that we should always be thinking about. That death for the believer is not always a tragedy but it's actually a graduation, and all of us will have to walk through that door one day. So how do you feel about death? How do you feel about your own death? I didn't mean to make y'all go all the way quiet, but these are the things that God is dealing with us about. Can I get an amen? Y'all all right to talk about death? We okay? It's a real thing. And I think God is restoring our perspective of it. That, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, he conquered the death, death, grave, and hell that this is something that we don't have to be scared of or to fear. We hate it. We have to go through grief. We have to go through loss. But God is changing and restoring our perspective. God is also, like I said, healing 
the way we deal with different opinions. Are y'all all right? This is a, this a, this a tough time, y'all. Is everybody got something to say about everything? How are you dealing with the people who don't agree with you? Maybe God's changing your perspective on how you deal with people. How do you kindly, politely disagree? How do you agree to disagree? How do you love people who do not see the things the way you see the things and are not doing the things that you know that they should do? How are you dealing with that? Let God heal and restore your perspective of these things. God's teaching us how to worship differently. We've never seen a time like this. We didn't know we could do church like this, but perhaps God is wanting to meet you in a different way. Maybe we're not, maybe we're never going back to what we thought was normal. Maybe this is a new thing that God's doing in our hearts and in our souls. And God wants to meet you in your secret place. God wants to meet you in your quiet time alone. God wants to meet you in community through small groups online. But I don't want to go online. Well, we're going to have to go online. It's a new season. How is God dealing with your perspective? God's t- teaching us and healing us about time alone. The pandemic, when we were in quarantine, a lot of people weren't used to being by themselves and having to be by myself. I can't keep my schedule full. I got to sit with me. I got to sit with my thoughts. I got to sit with the past. It became uncomfortable, but perhaps God is healing and restoring your uh, alone time with yourself and how you schedule your, your, your schedules and how do you take care of yourself and your self-care practices and how are you looking out for yourself? God is healing our perspectives. Are you open to God healing that part of how you see things? how we see things. The next thing is that God healed her posture. God healed her posture. Now I want you to think about this. Any miracle, if you, I want you to go back. In your time, spare time, read all of the chapter, Luke 13, because it got real at the synagogue. Like, I, I can't even go into all of it, but it got real. It got heated. And he's always, Jesus was always in this exchange with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, especially about the Sabbath and about rules and about things. And Jesus, y'all want to see the ultimate clap back? Read the rest of this chapter. Jesus gives the ultimate. I don't got time to go into it. I'm trying to stay focused. But we're going, he healed her posture. Now, any miracle that Jesus did was always for a sign. It was never just for the miracle's sake. Like, oh, yeah. Your little lady, you need to heal. Yeah, fine, be healed. No, 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 no. It was always a symbol for something. And even with the Pharisees, he was trying to get them to see about their posture, not just physically, but their heart posture. Y'all hear me? It wasn't, this miracle was just not about this little lady standing up straight. It was about the posture of their hearts, that their hearts were bent over and doubled over and been stuck and been hardened for 18 plus years. And Jesus wants to come and change your heart posture. Someone said heart posture. So it wasn't just about this physical miracle. It's about the heart posture. And saints, I'm learning in this season, in this pandemic, to take the heart posture of God. I want to learn the posture of God, the posture of God. Y'all know what the posture of God is? Learning to take the posture of God is like whenever something's going on, I want to look at how God's dealing with it. Nothing catches God by surprise. Nothing. God's not in heaven, wringing God's hands like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Oh no, I didn't see that coming. Oh, I didn't see, oh no, COVID, what are we gonna do? Oh man, there's hurricanes, I don't know what to do. God's not wringing God's hands. God's not worried, God's not anxious. God's not scratching God's head. Like, I don't know, this one got me. Angels, y'all didn't tell me nothing about this. I am determined to take the heart posture of God, to take the posture of God. In every situation, I'm gonna look at what my father is doing. What, how you handling it? Oh, you good? You, you, you got it all under control? Oh, you're not worried? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna be like Jesus in the boat. Storms raging all around, winds blowing, boat rocking, and what was Jesus doing? Sleep on a pillow 
chilling. That's the heart posture. Now, I'm not saying to be lazy and we're going to sleep through life. I ain't never going to work. That wasn't the, the theme of the story. The theme of the story is that's how our heart is supposed to be in the midst of a storm. That we're just going to sit and be relaxed in God, knowing that the God who made heaven and earth is in full control. Do y'all believe that? Does anybody believe that? Do y'all believe that? Do you believe that we serve a God who is in complete control? Then we have to learn to take the posture of God when things seem out of control. This is what I'm talking about, about our perspective and how God's healing our perspective. Now, I want you to check Satan's agenda. In this story, Jesus alluded to it. We, Jesus was like, I'm giving you game. I want you to check this out, right? In verse, in verse 11, he said her condition was caused by a demonic spirit of bondage that left her unable to stand up straight. Say what, Jesus? It was like a chuka chuka. The DJ scratched. Like, wait, what? Because we thought she was just had arthritis. We thought she was just something happened to Betty. We don't, I gave her a name. Something happened to Betty. We don't know what happened to her. She used to be standing up. Now she can't. No, Jesus said actually something different was going on, that we have an enemy that actually has an agenda for us. And his agenda is to keep us crippled, to keep us bound, and to keep us looking down with the limited perspective. This is the agenda of the kingdom of darkness towards us. This is why you got to peep this. Satan wants to keep us looking at the things of the earth, to keep looking at everyone's opinion, to keep looking at what's going on around us, to keep just inundated. Have you ever felt inundated? You turn on your timeline, it's like, oh, Lord, bad news, bad news. You turn on your phone, you're getting pop-ups, you're getting CNN, you're getting local news. It's just so much. Have y'all been feeling inundated? I'm like, I can't watch another video. I'm not watching another police pulling over video. I can't do it no more. Satan's agenda is to keep us inundated, to throw it at us, to throw it at us. And all we see is this. We just looking down, things of the earth. That's happening, that's happening, that's happening. The, the, the world is falling apart. Remember, the, the sky is falling. Y'all remember Chicken Little? What's that Chicken Little? The sky is falling. The sky is falling. That's the kind of panic the enemy wants us in. Looking down, bent over, crippled, 18 years. You don't have no other perspective but looking at the things of this earth. This is why Jesus came to set us free. Because as children of God, we got options, y'all. Come on, I want you to hear me. If you are a child of God, you got options. Looking down is not your only perspective. Looking down is not your only option. That The enemy will want you to think that there's no help, there's no hope, there's nothing happening. All, we're all going to hell. Everything's going bad. The world's going to, no. That's the panic that the enemy tries to give us. But as children of God, we have another perspective. Do y'all remember in the Bible, in the book of Psalms, when it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence my help cometh. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I thought I would get a better praise on that. Come on, I will lift my eyes. I got options. My, my perspective is not limited to the things of this earth. I will lift up mine eyes to which cometh my help. Another verse says, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, a glory and the lifter up of my head. This is who we serve. We serve the God who is constantly lifting our head. Why does God have to constantly lift our head? Because the things of the earth are constantly weighing us down. Opinions, situations, events will always have us looking at the things of this earth. But we have a God who says, I will lift your head. How many need to feel God's lifting power in their life right now? God, I need you to lift my head. I need a, a different perspective. And yes, we can still 
live in the reality. We can still keep our eyes on reality. So this is where we have to keep balance. We don't want to be so heavenly minded that we know earthly good. And everything, we don't, can't just write off everything like, oh, well, God going to handle it. No, we have some agency in the miracle. Do y'all know for every miracle that happened in the Bible, it took some kind of cooperation? It took some initiation from the person who received the miracle? Like, it got, rarely did God say, okay, do it. No, he's like, stretch out your hand. No, come forth. No, like, take a step. You come here. It was always something we had to work in partnership with God to receive your miracle. Lazarus, come forth. Lady with the, with the touch the hem of her heart. You can go on and on. You have to participate in the miracle. So where can we continue to keep our eyes on the reality of what's going on, but not let that be your focus? We have to trust and believe that everything that is going on is in God's hand and God has never lost control. But God wants to use us as agents in the world to make a change, to love each other in community, and to, and to make this, just to give out his love. Uh, what I like about with the lady, when she got her new perspective, she was able to look at community again. She couldn't look at anybody in the eyes, but now she can. And that just speaks to our responsibility for community. How are we keeping other people safe right now? How are we not thinking about ourselves and what I want to do and what I'm not going to wear and what I'm going to wait, 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 hold on. How are we going to take care of each other? Because literally this could have been over if we would have all had a community mindset, the group project mindset. I hate group projects. This is, this is why I hated group projects. This whole world is proving my point. Everybody don't be on the same page with a group project. This is literally involves the whole world and we can't get on the same page. That's neither here nor there. Um, so what do we need to do? What do we need to keep a balance? Keep a balance. That there's time that we watch the news, but we need to equal that with the time that we spend in the word, amen? There's times that we're on social media, but equal time should be in worship. I think Mother Loretta said this so well on a Wednesday night. Like, that's how she keeps her balance in this, whole, in this whole pandemic. Yes, I see what's going on, but then I also see what God is saying. Yeah, I see what's going on, but I'm, I'm equally going to worship as, as equal. You can't let that thing outbalance one another. Lastly, the last thing I'll say, and I am closing um, that a healed perspective brings an overflowing joy and praise. Y'all remember when God, when Jesus touched this little lady, she stood up straight and it said instantly she stood up straight and tall and overflowed with glorious praise to God. Can you imagine the scene she caused at the synagogue? You know, she probably went in. They probably had the little, the little lap things, a little trying to follow her. They was waving her probably. They had to, it was probably a whole thing. They probably couldn't shut up. Can you imagine after 18 years, I can stand up straight? Like, I can see, like, what? They said she went off. She went over, overflowing praise to God. She turned that synagogue out. And I love it. I love this little lady. So this is our lesson. Don't let this season in life consume you. Don't let the news around you fill you with long-term sadness. Yes, we do grieve. Yes, we do feel. Yes, we do have empathy. But we can't turn it into long-term sadness. Because when God gives you a heal perspective, your natural reaction is overflowing praise to God. Because you're not focused on the what, but you're focused on the who. Do y'all hear me? We're not going to focus on the what. We're focusing on the who. And once God heals your perspective, where you're not just looking at the things of the earth all the time, but you're looking at the God who has all power in his hands, it, it gives you a sense of joy and praise. You don't have to walk around sad and anxious. 
You can walk around like, I know God is in, God is it all in control. God, I worship you. God, I don't understand everything, but I know that you are trustworthy. God, I know that you are faithful. I know that you can heal. I know you're a God of mercy, overflowing praise. What has been on your lips? The Psalm says, his praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, ever be on. What's been on our lips? What have you been repeating? Let us take a lesson from this little lady. I love this little lady. Once she got healed, all she could do was praise God because God gave her a new perspective. So we just have a couple of takeaways you could talk about with your friends, your life groups. You could go over um, these things in your time alone. But I just want you to walk away from this and just remember. What has been weighing you down and causing you to focus too much on the things of this earth? I want you to think about it. I want you to name it. What are the things that are weighing you down and causing you to think too much about what's going on in this earth, right? Think about what it is. What's the issue? What's the news feed? What's the headline? And then number two, what would it look like for God to heal and restore your perspective in this area? The thing that you are struggling with, I want to present, I want to, uh, present to you that God can restore it, can heal it, not only heal it, but restore it to where it's supposed to be. So how do you want God to heal that, that thing? How do you want to see it different? God, we're going through right now, but what, are, what else can I see? Yeah, the numbers are up, but what else, what else is happening? Where are the opportunities for us to serve you and love you and serve other people? Number three, where can I take on the posture of God in my life? Think about everything that has you anxious, that has you fearful, and where can you take on the same posture and mannerism of God in this area. Knowing that you serve a God that can never be caught unawares, that has never lost control, that always has a plan, that doesn't have necessarily have to share with us that plan, because that's what made God God. That God is higher than us. God thinks if we if God thought like us, we'd be on the same level. We don't need God. So this is why we serve a sovereign God an almighty God, an all-knowing God. We might not know what's going on right now and what season, but we trust that we serve a God that does. Amen. Last thing, where is God trying to bring joy in your life after a perspective change? Just like when that lady was healed and began to overflow with praise, where is God trying to bring joy back to your life? Where are praises supposed to be flowing from your lips after God shows you this is not the only thing that you can look at? Yeah, things are going, things are bad right now, but there's, there's another option. You can look up. You can look to me. I can change your perspective. So this is what God's going to do. God's going to heal and restore our perspective. Do you receive it? Do you receive it? Yes, we receive it in Jesus' name. Let's just close in prayer. If you're here and you want God to do this work in your life, that you're, you're hearing this message and you're like, yes, all I can see right now is the things that are around me, are the headlines, the numbers, the news feeds, the arguments, the debates, the opinions. It's weighing me down. If that's you, let's just take some time and ask God to heal us. Oh, Jesus, we need a touch from you. Thank you for this little lady that doesn't even have a name, but that you use to teach us about what you want to do in our lives. God, we've been inundated with everything around us, and sometimes it's so hard not to look at anything but what's going on in the earth. God, some of us feel bent over and doubled over and weighed down and stuck and in crazy positions that we don't want to be in, just like this little lady. But God, we invite your healing touch right now. 
First of all, we thank you that you see us. Even when we can't see, you see us. God, we worship you. Thank you for seeing us. Thank you for gently laying your hands on us. So right now, can you just lift your hands and receive and believe that God is touching your mind, that God is touching your heart, that God is touching your eyes, your spiritual eyes, to give you a different perspective. God, will you heal us? God, will you cause us to straighten up? Will you talk, cause us to stand tall? Will you give us a new perspective? God, will you help us not just to look at the things on the earth or the things that are lower, things are on the ground, but will you cause us to look up to the hills from which cometh our help? Our help comes from you. You are our glory. You are the lifter up of our head. God, we receive it right now. God, will you begin to do the work in our lives? We'll never underestimate the touch of Jesus on our lives. So God, we receive it. We receive it. You don't even have to feel anything to receive it. Just receive it by faith. God, heal my perspective. Let me see it a new way. Let me see what you're doing in the kingdom. Let me see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. God, use me to be a part of whatever you're doing in the earth right now. God, I thank you right now. Heal us. Touch us. We believe that you are healing and restoring our perspective. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Come on, if you receive it, will you get the Lord a hand clap? Will you begin to worship God? Will you be like the lady and let praise just flow from your lips? Will you begin to say hallelujah? Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you. God, you're healing me. God, you're changing me. You're letting me see it different. God, I thank you. God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, let your praise overflow in our hearts. Even when it doesn't make sense, oh God, will you just rest upon us and let us see you in your glory, God. Let us see you even when we don't understand. We say we trust you. We trust you. We take on your posture, your position. Our hearts are postured towards you. And if you're also watching and you don't know this Jesus, I need to know this man. Who is this person who can change hearts and lives and cause me to stand up straight. We invite, we offer Jesus to you. If you want to know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, why don't you just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I want to know you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. And Lord, bless me as I start this new journey to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Well, saints, thank you for joining us another Sunday. We pray that God spoke something to your heart that will get you through the week and continue to help you as we go on this journey, as we enter into this season in community, right? We're going to do it together. So um, don't forget on Wednesday, we have online Bible study, Grow with Pastor Mike on our website. You'll get all the information. We have live groups starting up in September. Please join a community. This is not the time to be isolated, to be the little sheep, the little one of the 99 out there by yourself. No, we're going to get you back in here. We're going to get in the fold. We're going to do this together. Even if we're doing it virtually, we're going to do it together. You need community. I need community. Let's be in community together. Amen. All right, saints, have a wonderful Sunday. We love you. See you again next week. And don't forget to show people the way. Amen. Bye.